Good evening. Here we are again for part three of lesson uh, 21 of CENG 4412 Steel and Concrete Design. I want to continue with the discussion, uh, continue on with our discussion of uh, connections. And in particular right now, I'd like to look at bolted shear connections, our first element of uh, bolted connection design, bolted shear connections. Uh, in, and I want to be, in particular, I want to begin with looking at failure modes. So uh, let's look at bolted shear connections. That's going to be the topic for this video. Bolted shear connections. Make sure we're recording and good. And we are, so we're good. Okay. Bolted shear connections. Bolted shear connections. Okay. So the first thing I'd like to look at is failure modes. And I'd like to look at a, a two splice, uh, two, uh, the two lap splice connections. I'd like to look at diff two, the two different lap splice connections. So consider the lap splice connection. But in particular, I want to look at uh, failure modes. So this video is going to be focusing on failure modes of uh, shear connections. Okay, so let's look at failure modes. Uh, so consider uh, the uh, consider the two possible lap splice connections. Uh, lap splice connections. So where this would apply is, let's say you had a. <clears throat> Now, a lap splice connection, if you're not familiar, is where you're going to join two plates together. And these could be just two plates, or they could be a plate and the web of, some, of a W section. They could be the plate and the flange or something. Uh, anything where one plate meets another. And so let's say you have one plate here and another plate here. Connecting like this and connecting like this. And I'm gonna pull on each of these with a load of P. Now, this looks a lot like the tension member connections that we've seen previously, but uh, these are, but the actual individual connectors, if you think of the forces they're in, are going to be under shear, and we will explore that. And so I have four bolt holes here, one, two, three, four. Now, you don't have to have four, you can have many different numbers of bolts, uh, sometimes getting quite numerous. Um, but let's just draw this out and make it four for simplicity's sake. Uh, and let's consider the area of one bolt. The area of one bolt would be equal, the area of one bolt would be equal to pi over four times the diameter of the bolt squared. Just a very simple geometric calculation of the cross-sectional area of a circle. Now, I'd like to look at two different possible cases, both shingle, single shear and double shear. Let's consider, let's consingle, oh, let's consingle, wow. Let us consider single shear. So let's look at this at a material level, not necessarily a material level, but as at a plane level, and see what kind of uh, forces are present on different uh, planes. So I have the one plate, and then I have the other plate. And this is being pulled on P here. And then I have the other plate, and this is being pulled on by force P as well. I mean to draw the double plate on the next slide. Uh, P here as well. And uh, then let's say here, let's show the bolts here. A bolt here and a bolt here. Uh, now, um, here, the, the shear plane is going to be right here, where the actual two plates meet. We call this the shear plane. You sometimes see this reference in the code and in text. The shear plane is where the two actual, where the two plates actually meet. And let me um, go ahead and, you know what, I can't actually draw both of these together, but uh, for, for clarity, I think I'm going to show the actual plates, planes of these things um, by, indicate, by uh, colors. 
So basically, shear, where is shear going to occur? Well, the actual bolts, they're what's going to be under shear. If I think, imagine having the bolts going, passing through these things, the plate, the bolts are joining these two plates together. And uh, so there's a bolt, there'd be like a bolt uh, head and nut here and here. And so the shear plane is here and here. The, the plates are being pulled apart and the, uh, the uh, the bolts are experiencing shear stress, stress uh, uh, shearing them apart along this plane here. Uh, so this is this I'm going to use red for shear stress, and then I'll use blue for bearing stress. Bearing stress is when one bit of material butts up and wants to is uh, being forced against another bit of material. If you're not familiar with the term, so this would be in bearing. This would be in bearing, and then this would be in bearing, and this would be in bearing. So this would be uh, bearing stress. Shear stress and bearing stress. Um, so, so we have a combination of shear and bearing. Then I can also show the double shear case. And this is going to be a bit more complicated, but uh, simple enough. This is where you have three plates coming together. Uh, sometimes you need this if you just don't have enough area, uh, plate area on to carry the required loads you have. Oh, and in this case, the overall FV for the single shear case, the shear stress on the bolts, the bolt stress, FV or bolt stress, is going to be equal to P divided by four times the area of the bolt, for this case here anyway. Where P is the overall air, is the overall load, uh, car overall tension load carried by the entire connection here, the P. Um, and then, but, and the reason it's four here is because I have four bolts, uh, over four times the area of the bolt. Um, so here, then for the double shear stress, uh, double shear plane case, this is where I have three plates coming together. So I would have one middling plate here, one middle plate here, and then two plates on either side, or one plate on either side. IP here, and then I have two plates, one top plate and one bottom plate. And we can, of course, imagine any number of plates, but uh, the more you have, the more complex your connection and uh, things start to get complex and uh, difficult to discuss very quickly. Uh, you'll have to really dig into the minutia of the code if you want to handle more than this. Okay, so we have this. Actually, I shouldn't show the continuing lines. That'd be more of a, just an end line there. And so we have this, and then this continues on. So because we're splitting the load in half, or because we have two plates, we're splitting the load in half. So we'd have P here, but P over two, we'd have P, or, P on the right and P over two on the left. Now then, let's say we have bolt holes again, or bolts passing through here and here, and here and here. And you know what, maybe for clarity, I'll go ahead and draw uh, maybe a nut on here, or sorry, maybe just a, a head for the bolt here. Maybe a head for the bolt here. That's a really ugly bolt head. Wow, that's an even worse one. I need to work on my art skills. Okay, there are some quick and dirty bolt heads. Now let us look at, let's label the uh, bearing and shear planes. So the shear planes now, in this case, I have two shear planes. I have one here and here. Oh, that's not gonna work very well. I have a shear plane a shear plane and a shear plane. So I have two shear planes. And then sh let me show the stresses here. So these bolts are actually going to be in double shear stress. Although that's actually a good thing because it, it makes it so they can carry twice the amount of shear load they otherwise would be able to. Because they have two different shear planes and these loads are not really interacting with each other. These planes are not really interacting with each other. I have shear stress on the, on these four planes, so each bolt is actually being subject to two different shear uh, planes. Uh, and then I have uh, bearing stress 
on these planes here. I have bearing stress on this plane, uh, this plane, and this plane, and this plane, and this plane, and this plane. Bearing stress. Uh, I can use the same colors there. And then the overall shear stress, the overall bolt shear stress, because we have uh, two different uh, shear planes, uh, we get a, quite a bit of benefit here. For this case, for the, for the double shear case, FV is equal to P. The, again, FV is the shear stress in the bolts. We learn, won't learn how to calculate the uh, bolt stress in this video. I'll just see that later on. But this is going to be equal to P divided by 8 over the area of the bolt. 8 over the area of the bolt. And this is just how we calculate the uh, a plot. Basically, this is this slide is illustrating how to calculate the not the allowable stress, but the uh, demand or the required stress for a uh, a set of bolts or for a connection for a bolt connection. Okay, so let's move on to talking about uh, failure modes. How can a bolted connection fail? So backing up, we saw that um, here the uh, bolts go into shear and the plates go into bearing. So, and these could be, again, these could be actual like A36 plates or something like that, or they could be the Weber flanges of a W section, an angle, a C channel, whatever you may have. Um, but there are, uh, so for a connection, for a bolted connection, there are many different possible ways for this thing to fail. Uh, possible ways, uh, failure methods, for bolted connections. Possible failure methods for bolted connections. Uh, one, I have good old fashioned bolt shear. I could just shear those bolts right in half. Uh, two, I could have bearing failure. And this is typically, when we say bearing failure, what we mean is a failure of the plate. Uh, of the plate. Uh, and this is gonna be a function of plate thickness. A function of plate thickness. And um, here, it also is a function of uh, spacing and edge distance of holes. Spacing and hole edge distance. Uh, spacing and edge distance here. Uh, and then we have other forms of plate failure. And many of these are the ones we previously discussed in our tension member design, uh, first unit of the course. Uh, other plate failure, oh, keep bouncing forward. Uh, other plate failure, and this includes things like block shear, uh, plate section, uh, gross section yielding, all of that fun stuff. Uh, etc. All that fun stuff that we discussed at the beginning of the semester. Okay, so we have that um, here, and let's see, and that's really a overall review of how that might work. Um, well, I what I want to I want to uh, look in this video about um, let's see, uh, let's see if I have time here. Yep, we're doing, yeah, this is quick enough to into the video. I think it would make sense to keep discussing this. Actually, you know what? No, I'll go ahead and stop it here. That's fine. I mean, this, video, this lecture will have many smaller parts.